short case which presented to us in the OPD a few days ago. And uh, we had the opportunity to investigate it also. And uh, the patient has been operated, but the operative part we will discuss in the next session. Today, we are going to discuss the clinical findings or the clinical presentation and the investigative part about this patient. So with these words, I go on to the history of this patient. So this patient happens to be an 11 year old girl who presented to us with a swelling in the upper back region on the left side. On talking to the parents of the child who happened to be the mother of the child who was accompanying her, she told us that the swelling was uh, has been gradually increasing in size. Uh, she also told us that she first noticed the swelling when the child was just three years old. And at that point in time, according to the mother, the size of the swelling was akin to a small lemon. And this is the clinical picture of the patient when she presented to us. So you all can have a look at the, the swelling, which is on the left side of the posterior chest wall, or you can also call it in the paraspinal and the midspinal area, whichever way you want to describe it. So this is the swelling which was there. So when such a patient presents to us, there are certain other questions which arise. And uh, so you need to know what else is important as far as the history in this child is concerned. So the first and foremost is how did it start? So I have already told you at the age of three years, this was noticed first by the mother and it was the size of a lemon. Uh, is it associated with pain, discomfort, or any functional loss? So there was no pain or any sort of discomfort. The only complaint which the child had, which I spoke to her personally, and she volunteered that she finds it extremely uncomfortable to lie straight in the bed. So since the history of the child or the patient happens has to be in the language of the patient. Uh, what she meant was in technical terms, when she lies in the supine position, she is uncomfortable and she prefers to lie on in the left lateral or the right left lateral side. So this is, there was no real functional loss here, but this was the disability or this was the problem which the patient was facing. And we felt, uh, obviously, this is a significant problem. What, how has the swelling evolved? So this has been gradually increasing and it has progressed to the present size, about which you have already formed an impression. And we will slowly also come to assessing the size of the swelling objectively using a tape measure later in the presentation. Are there any similar swelling elsewhere in the body? So the, when this question was asked, the child told us that she has some swellings in the knee region and in the proximal humerus on the left side. And this is again a very important uh, history which needs to be elicited and the parts which are affected need to be examined in spite of the fact that this is a short case. Quickly, one should be able to examine the other parts if they are affected. So the, the last but not the least, is there any loss of weight or appetite or is the child febrile to which the answer was in the negative? 
she was real and hearty she was very active and she had no such complaints well this is important because of the simple reason that since we are still at the a, at the stage of just history taking and we have had a glimpse of the swelling which means that we have only inspected the swelling and not even that in a in a detail so it is important to elicit history of weight loss loss of appetite fever for the simple reason that swellings in the paraspinal area can be in the indian subcontinent they can easily be arising from the spine for instance tuberculosis of the spine can give rise to a paraspinal abscess because at this stage we do not know what is the consistency of the swelling and what are the other features because we have not palpated it so at this stage this history of constitutional symptoms being there or not is important in this case they were none and this is if you look at the knee there are these small swellings which were there this is proximal tibia and the similar small swelling somewhere in the knee in the metaphyseal area was also visible so this were the visible swellings but in the proximal humerus on the left hand side there was no visible swelling though there was a palpable swelling which we will come to later in the presentation